Greetings everyone! This week's project is a table I purchased at an estate sale for only $5. When I was paying for the table, the woman in charge of the sale relayed a very interesting story to me that she had been told by a relative of the owner of the home where the sale was being held. As the story goes, this table had been in the family for quite some time, and at some point it gained a very interesting reputation. According to her, any time a woman in the family wanted to get pregnant, she need only place this table in their bedroom, and it seems that very frequently the wife would become pregnant. In time, the family members came to believe that not only would it help you get pregnant, but that you could choose the sex of the baby by painting the table blue or pink. Apparently, one woman didn't care what the sex of her baby was, so she painted it white, and she ended up with fraternal twins, a boy and a girl. This relative said some members of her family swore that this table had some magical power, and they had named it the Baby Maker. I have no idea if there's any truth to this story. However, it is clear that there are multiple coats of paint on this table, and it does appear to be quite old, but it has been kept clean and dry so the wood is in good condition. Once again, I'm curious about what's under all that paint, and I hope I can restore it to its original condition. Of course, the first step is always cleaning the project, so I sprayed a generous amount of crud cutter on the table and scrubbed off the dirt. Water was then used to remove any remaining crud cutter from the table. I allowed the table to dry thoroughly before I began to strip the finish from the legs using quick strip. As you can see, I used a chip brush to apply a generous coating. Because of the VOCs in the quick strip, you should always wear a well-fitting chemical respirator, two pairs of nitrile gloves to protect your hands, and eye protection. While I don't use the stripper outside, I do have multiple fans on me, and all the doors are, to my workshop are open to increase airflow. After about 15 minutes, I used a coarse steel wool as well as a wire brush to scrub off the finish. When it appeared that I had loosened all the finish on the legs, I used a paper towel to wipe off all the liquefied finish and any remaining quick strip. The last step in stripping the legs was to use coarse steel wool to literally wash off any remaining stripper and finish with mineral spirits. I then used paper towels to wipe that off. Later when I sanded the legs, I realized that I should have stripped it a second time. I would have had a lot less sanding to do. Stripping furniture is one of my least favorite things to do. However, the only way to remove the finish on the legs was to strip it. I can't imagine how long it would have taken to sand off the finish from the legs.
As you saw in the video, I repeatedly applied more stripper to the top. While I didn't show it on the video, I allowed the stripper to sit at least 15 minutes before I applied more or before I scraped it off. I estimate that this table had over 14 coats of blue, pink, and white paint. While I have no way to verify the story of this as a baby maker table, the fact that it had so many layers of blue and pink paint makes me think that there may be something to the story. All that paint made it much more difficult to strip the top. I think it took me about four hours in total to strip this small table. This table was full of surprises for certain. While it seemed to take forever to work my way through the many layers of paint, I was absolutely shocked to see the beautiful inlaid wood. The primary wood is walnut with beautiful wood grain. I'm not certain what the legs are made of, but I think they're mahogany. After the top was completely dry, I hand sanded the legs with 120 grit sandpaper. I then sanded the top with 400 grit sandpaper because I was so concerned about damaging the inlaid wood. As you can see, I applied masking tape on the strip of inlaid wood to protect it from damage due to sanding. I hand sanded a few areas adjacent to the strip to remove all the finish. I applied two coats of natural color Danish oil to the top 15 minutes apart. After 30 minutes, I removed any remaining Danish oil with a lint-free cloth. I didn't like the natural Danish oil on the legs because it appeared to me the final color of the legs was just too light. Therefore, I added 1 8 teaspoon of oil-based dark walnut stain to 1 quarter cup of the natural Danish oil and used this tinted Danish oil on the legs. This greatly enhanced the color of the legs so they more closely matched the color of the walnut on the top. Just as I did for the top, after allowing the Danish oil to soak into the legs for 30 minutes, I removed any remaining Danish oil with a lint-free cloth. 
The Danish oil can be the final finish, but if desired, you can also apply a coat of oil-based polyurethane to make the top waterproof. We're now ready to recall what this fabled baby maker table looked like when I started with its many layers of blue, pink, and white paint. And here is the final table with its beautiful inlaid wood and gorgeous book-matched walnut. Of course, a question I have for you, my viewers, is this. Do you think I should tell the new owners the baby maker story of this table? Give me your opinion in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel a lot because it tells YouTube that this video is of value and others would benefit too. If you become a subscriber and click the notification bell, you'll be the first one notified when I post my weekly videos. I certainly appreciate all the support great viewers like you have shown my little channel. I enjoy reading the words of encouragement in the comments and it's very motivating that you appreciate what I do. On the right, you'll see several videos that provide additional information about how to refinish, restore, and restyle furniture so you can flip it for a profit or refinish it for your personal use. Thanks for watching.